This is probably the most controversial project that I ever seen in the network engineering community, uh, specifically just the discussions and the heat, you know, of the comments. It's just, eh, I don't want to be caught in the middle of that. <laughs> but uh, this project is called the IPv4 uh, Unicast Extension Project. And the goal of this, it has effectively now four internet drafts, four RFCs that are not approved, they are just draft, to unreserve specific IPv4 addresses back so they can be publicly routable and addressable as a unicast IPv4 public IP addresses in the internet. How about we jump into it and read this little bit of a blurb of this article and then discuss a little bit more. So the person leading this effort, uh, his name is Seth Shun, is that how you read the name? He's pretty young. He's very close to my age, actually. And uh, he's a senior staff technologist of Electric Frontier Foundation and Technology Civil Rights uh, Organization. And uh, he's he's pretty well known when it comes to network engineering. His proposal is called the IPv4 Unicast Extensions Project. Let's read a little bit... Uh, the blurb of this project and then go through the four drafts in very briefly and he has like a very nice picture describing this thing this project responds to the continued acute scarcity i love the war the double you know adjectives here acute scarcity of ipv4 addresses by proposing changes that would free up hundreds of millions of addresses or about seven percent of the ipv4 address space we know ipv4 is only at about four billions so and when it was first designed a lot of these addresses were reserved this is a very common thing in computer science a lot of when you uh, even if you design a project or you build a database you start reserving uh, things for future use just in case and it's, oh, it's mostly it's a good idea several decisions made during the 1980s in the infancy of the ipv4 resulted in making these addresses special and unavailable for ordinarily addressing purposes he's going through all of this and then he's explaining all of the things that he can undo sort of speak right and i gotta admit this is a very nice picture that explains all the work that needs to be done the first one being that having the least bit the lowest address be zero available for normal addressing as we can explain so for example 10.0.0.0 today is not available for you as just another normal ip address right and it doesn't really have to be the number zero in decimal it's the bits exactly right so that's why it says the number of zeros at the right varies according to the net mass so the last number could be something else doesn't have to be actual zero in a decimal sense we're talking about the lowest addressable address in in the network itself so the second one that is i do, i really don't know why it's reserved is 240 slash four uh slash the slash notation means that the actually effectively the the network bits right the slash fours mean the first four bit is the network space while the rest are the address space that's what slash four means so 240 slash four means 240.0.0.0 slash four that's what it means for those wondering so in this case these are reserved so there is no 240.0.0.7 publicly addressable you cannot use it it's called the e class and it's also reserved they want to free that all of that right space back except because it's 240 right because these four bits represent 240 if you put another four bits that are ones this will become two, 255 and if you happen to have a host 255 255 255 this is no this is the broadcast effectively the broadcast ip address and it should be reserved so that's why they clearly say here 240 slash 4 we want to release it back to the wild except 255.255.255.255 because this lives within this subnet yeah. the fourth one is 0 slash 8 so the first eight bits is the network address and that's a zero right and the rest are just network addresses so zero dot 
1.7.8, you cannot just listen and use that today. They want to release that back, right? So look at how many addresses they want to release it. And the final one, which is really one of the most uh, scary one here, is 127 slash 8. And I say, wait a minute, isn't that the loopback? Yes. So the loopback, as we know it, for 99% of the cases, is 127.0.0.1. That's the loopback IPv4 where you can listen on a loopback and you can send you can send IP packets to that address and it will be addressed in the same machine effectively. The truth here, when it was first reserved back in the 80s, it was the entire one, 127 slash 8, that entire thing, that entire thing was loopback, is reserved for the loopback. So you can today do it. You can create an IP address 127.0.0.3, and that will be it considered a loopback. 127.1.2.7, that's a loopback. So their proposal here is we get you guys can keep 127 slash 16. That means 127, right? Dot zero XX, that entire thing becomes loopback. But we want to take 127 slash 8 entire thing except that subnet, right? So that means 127.0 dot anything dot anything effectively becomes loopback. So 127.0.0.1, obviously, and dot zero dot two, I'm gonna tell you go all of them, right? So these are the four drafts, right? So this will reserve millions of other unreserved millions of addresses what's the problem with this guys when this has been gone for what 30 years now it's been there for a long time so software has been built devices have been built Sh firmware has been built with this reservation in mind billions of devices exist today that effectively treat software and, and this is just the devices what about the libraries that we use as backend and frontend engineers? You know, what about all those C, C++, PHP libraries, Python, JavaScript libraries to parse and understand what a loopback is, what, not, what a no loopback is not? How much work is this going to entail to release millions of addresses back to the public interest is it worth it that's the question that people are asking is it really worth it why not implement ipv6 let's implement ipv6 it's easier and someone actually mentioned that an isp from the uk mentioned that in twitter so he does not like that he says no let's not do that because testing and changing all devices that no that 240 slash 8, 0 slash 8, and 127 slash 8, etc., are special is a bigger job than making them just use IPv6. A lot of people are against that, and you can read the tweets. It's a carnage out there, right? So there's a lot of things. He tries to address all of these concerns. Do I think this these four drafts will be approved? I really doubt that they will i really doubt it just because if you read the project and you read the comments and you read the github repo where was this project x and i'm gonna reference everything in the comment section and in the in the show note if you're listening to the podcast uh, i'm gonna reference all of that and the the majority are against this project it, here's one more thing as well the, the 127 some people say that yeah you're giving us for the for the loopback you're giving us uh, slash 16 back, but there are implementations that use 127.1.x.x as a, as a current implementation. What are you going to do with that? People are already started using this in the world. How can you undo that? How can you fix it? It's just a momentous effort. Again, Pretty sure they they probably they can argue about this and discuss this to just to end this video and make it not don't make it any 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 longer than necessary. 
the scarcity of ipv4 addresses were solved by you know ipv6 or attempt to be solved by ipv6 and obviously nat addresses the problem of having a lot of devices sharing one public ip address so that's solved and for the opposite side for the back end we have sni and the host header in the http uh, the server name indication tls that allows you to host thousands of websites if you will on a single public ip address so you don't really necessarily need multiple public ip addresses to host multiple websites right so we all of these have been solved in an elegant manner sort of if you if you consider those elegant i do but uh freeing up ipv4 i don't know is it necessary the engineering behind the thoughts has gone through is really commended i really enjoy reading this because just the thought of and the learning that i'm um that i'm to knowledge that i'm learning is is precious to be honest and, th and that's that's enough for me all right i'm gonna leave it to you what do you guys think about this project leave your comments in the comment section below i'm gonna see you in the next one you guys stay awesome goodbye